How are we going, everyone? Well, it's that time of the year, folks. I spoke about it yesterday, and I'm going to do it today. Dig up this poor little lemon tree that just doesn't want to grow anymore. So we're going to see what's going on down below. We've got all these weeds and grass growing around it. First thing to do, if you're transplanting a lemon tree this time of year, you can quite safely. Now, this is a real small tree, as you can see. There are no branches, or they've been, I think it's been chewed off here by either the dog or the horse anyway. You know what's going on here in this property. So imagine if your tree was about this round and you needed to take it out. And, or, you know, if it's any bigger than that, you're going to need a, you know, a couple of blokes or even machinery to help you dig it up. Because uh, even me on my own, I wouldn't be able to take out a tree of this size with a trunk like that without causing too much damage. So you, you need to take caution when you're working on bigger trees and use machinery where possible. In a case like this, let's just imagine this tree was around this big in diameter. <laughs> really, a, you're a noisy girl. <laughs> Let's say the tree was about this big in diameter. What we're going to do is work to its drip line. So the aim here is to dig the root ball out the same diameter as what the drip line would be. Now, this is quite small, so it's quite safe to say that the roots haven't grown. So I can dig about this far or this round from the center of the trunk to the width of these branches quite safely. If the tree's a lot larger, you can cut it back and only cut it back by about 30%, folks. Any more than that, you're going to risk, well, you're not going to risk anything. You're just going to, you know, take too much of the tree and it's going to have to grow twice as hard afterwards. So what we're going to do is use a nice, clean, sharp spade or shovel that you have and cut nice and deep, going in a nice circular form all the way around. Not the best of holes or circles. The bigger the tree, folks, the bigger, obviously, the, the diameter on it. Now, what you need to do, you can, look, in the past, I've said to go down like this in the shovel and get underneath it and carefully lift it up. What we're gonna do instead today is because I'm gonna make a bigger hole here, I'm not going to dig a small hole like this round and just replace the soil and put it back in. We're actually going to go a lot larger. So we're going to go the width of the shovel about there, which is about 20 centimetres, and we're going to dig outside again as well. So what we're actually doing is digging a huge hole. You can do a round hole if you like, but I reckon square holes are better than round holes. You know why? Think about it. The pot's around. What happens to the roots when they're growing in the pot? They're following the contours of the pot, aren't they? They're going round and round and round and round. And they're going to choke themselves. Eventually, if it becomes pot bound, it'll choke itself. Where in a square hole, the roots will grow straight into the wall. It can't go left hand degrees or right hand degree angles, so it's going to try and penetrate through. Some roots may bend around the, at, at 90 degrees, but most of them will try and push through that wall. So, a square hole it is. Buddy? Vader. Hey, buddy. Hey, mate. Hey, sorry to bother you, mate. You want to take this branch over here? Come here. Good boy. That's it. Don't you get jealous. And then we're going to take the outside parts in small sections. I'm going to try and turf cut this. No, I'm not going to do that because the roots are too far deep. Look at that. It's nice sandy loam soil. But this tree just doesn't like this area, I reckon. Now, I've probably said this before, folks, but this is the last time I'm going to give this tree a chance to survive in this spot. If it doesn't, I'm going to put a park bench here. You can use a pitchfork if you want, but I don't think I've reached the boundaries of the roots, so the, the shovel's okay if you want to cut some of the roots off. If you want to try and save as much of the root ball as possible, Use a garden fork like this and work your way through it. Because this root ball hasn't grown, folks, I know it hasn't because the tree hasn't moved on top. And that's the simple way of understanding whether your tree's growing or not. Yeah, roots don't grow, your tree's not going to grow. That's what grows first, then the top half. If for whatever the reason top half grows real quick, most times it's because your soil's so acidic, so full of nitrogen, that's what's causing it to grow. But eventually it's going to die it's just as fast as it grows. So that's how fast it'll die off again. So I've just gone with a shovel, gone right underneath it. There we are. Upa. That's our rip ball. Now I guarantee you half of this or three quarters of this is just a waste of soil sitting on it. So I'm going to try and manoeuvre it. Have a look. 
look at the soil. This is a potty mix underneath. There are our roots. And you can see it's actually struggling. That's our taproot down there, is it? No, bamboo stick. Look, we've got new, is that roots from the tree? No, it's not, it's grass roots. All right. Shake off all the excess soil, especially the stuff with the weeds on top. Let's pull this stuff off first. I guarantee that you know what's gonna happen here. <laughs> There's our lemon tree label. <laughs> I'm gonna be left with about one third or one fifth or whatever's here. All this is grass and weeds, look at it. There's our tree. <laughs> look at this, oh Lord. It has not grown one little bit. They're not too dark, the roots. Oh, a little bit here, see that? See that darkness there? That's not a good sign. So that's telling you the tree's been struggling, that's dying off. That's all dead, fibrous roots. This is good on this side. We can probably do something with this side anyway. What I should do now is soak this in some liquid gold while I prepare the ground. Lawn grubs. See that? They feed off the roots of plants and they've migrated into the garden beds and starting to eat the roots off your, your plants, not just your grass. Because they normally live in the grass, but now they've learned to eat bloody roots of tomatoes and trees as well. Anyway, we'll be able to save this tree. All right, so we're just gonna soak this in some liquid gold in here, this little bucket. Just to keep it nice and healthy and stimulated and stop it from going into shock. Just lean, stay there, don't fall over. We can't all afford to buy garden soil folks or potty mix or really fancy stuff to put in the hole so we're going to work with what we have now if you're making your own compost that's great at least buy compost if anything don't buy soil because you've got soil in your garden and straw mulch so what I'm going to be putting in here is our straw mulch with our chicken manure that's been aged I've got a pile over there so I'm going to mix that into here and I'm going to try and mount this up a little bit higher so it drains better because it needs good drainage. It needs the water, but it also needs good drainage. So for now, let's just loosen up all the soil. It's inevitable, folks. These roots from the weeds will grow back again. So just take out as much of it as you can. If there are bulbs in there, that's a different issue, but that's going to be difficult trying to get them all out. But roots like this, most of them will just decompose um, and turn into, you know, food for the microbes in the soil. Okay, so we've loosened the soil up. Now I'm going to add my this is my chicken manure. Sorry, I was just going to throw that out like an old twig. Behave, stay. It's okay. Now this is the chicken manure that I've aged with um, straw and wood ash actually, and black grit. So I'm going to go and get some more of that. You can see the straw. It's broken down a little bit, not all of it. See there? See how it's a little bit of moisture has got into it and starting to decay away? That's exactly what you want it to do. Now, I'm going to blend this through because I want this sort of texture in the soil. Look at the soil we've got underneath here. Sandy loam, squeeze it, goes hard. Don't mind the roots and the fibrous or, or the weeds there, sorry. That's what happens. So when you break it, it breaks away you know, when you touch it. So it doesn't go hard like clay, but it still goes firm. So it means it doesn't get enough airflow, good drainage. This is what I want. I want this mixed through into that soil. I'm not gonna plant straight into this, but I'm actually gonna just mix it through together so we get a good blend of sandy loam, straw, mulch, uh, manure, chicken manure that is, you can see the charcoal I've added into it. Now if you haven't got wood ash, yeah, this, this time of year most people have got fireplaces, but if you haven't got any, this is the alternative. It's actually probably better. Biochar, which is basically um, a charcoal base, but it's been uh, infused or inoculated with the microbes, so it's got the ability to put the carbon back into the soil as well. So it does, it, it'll stay there forever in a day, and it'll just constantly release slowly and help the little microbes, you know, nest in there, feed off that, feed into the garden, and it sweetens up the soil. So that combined with your black reed is a powerhouse. So let's get some more of this stuff and start mixing it in. You know what I'm going to do, folks? I've added another bucket's worth of aged animal manure. That's chicken manure, straw and everything, and carbon. But I'm going to do everything possible this time around to get this tree to survive. I'm actually going to put a couple of handfuls of our worm castings. This is our ballerine worm castings. Full of, full of beautiful nutrients. This is what exactly the tree will need to grow big and strong. We're going to put some black grit, so there's no excuse other than the tree's not a happy tree, that's all. I'm sure we'll bring it to life. And a bit of this biochar. Come over. There we go. All right, so we're gonna blend all this in. If you're wondering why I'm putting biochar and black grid, because they're two different things. Now, black grid is volcanic rock, 
biochar is a charcoal, volcanic rock, black root is calcium silicate, uh, phosphate especially, so it helps the roots to grow bigger and stronger, whereas biochar is the carbon back in the soil, which basically sweetens the soil and stops anything from burning up. And use a garden fork, folks, not a shovel, to mix it through, because you want to shake it through like that. See how I'm doing that? Getting it to blend through. If you're going to get straw in the bag, you're going to have to chop it up. You can't put it in its full form, it'll be too stringy. It's a lot easier once it's chopped up to blend through. Look at that, how good's that, huh? All we're going to do is put some straw on top at the end, but, well, this time of year you don't actually have to put mulch or straw on top of your trees. Let it be like that as it is, let it drain through, let it breathe a bit more, because the mulch itself will retain a bit of moisture there. Yeah, it may keep it a bit warm, but it's not necessary at this time. Do mulch them by August before the, the warm weather comes or the spring season starts. But until then, just a nice fluffy soil just like this is all you need to have. Look at that. We've got a bit of everything going on in here. All right, get our tree, which has been soaking in here for a few minutes. You can leave it overnight if you like. If you don't get a chance to do it all in the one day, let it sit in there overnight. Now, when we put it in, make sure you open the roots up like that. See? And when you push the soil down, don't press it down with your fingers hard like that, don't compact it. What you do is you mound it up like this and then you shake it through. So you get all those air pockets filled in so it sort of just falls into those little gaps underneath. Now this is going to need to be staked up because I don't want to press it down, I want it to be nice and fluffy. I want to see this, to I want to see this grow <laughs> within a month, well maybe not a month, a couple of months because it's still too cold for the grub. Look at this, this is lawn grub. We spoke about it before. When you find one, you're going to find many of them. This is a baby still, hasn't grown yet. They get twice the size, folks. Now this is going to feed off the roots of, like I said earlier, grass and even fruit trees and citrus trees. So when you dig in a hole and you find these, get them out of there. Don't leave them in there. They're going to do nothing but problems in your garden. They destroy your plants. Where's my chickens? Yeah, chick, 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 chick. Here we go. See you later. <laughs> Got the protein. But Essie. When it comes to staking your trees, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can do it with one stake, which is what I'm going to do this time here, because I've got a very, very small root ball, and I'm going to carefully push it in. Or the other option, before I go onto this one here, is getting two or three garden stakes and keeping them about a foot apart. So doing a triangular formation, one, two, and three, is a great way to do it, and you tie it to each stake. So I did that with our orchard, with all our fruit trees in our orchard. I did a double stake, one on opposite side, pulling it in east and west or north and south. That works great, but for this little tree here, you know what, I'm just going to go against the grain again. I'm going to carefully try and push this in. If I do grab hold of the roots, the tree will move. So watch. No, I should be right past the tree. I've hit the base there. All right. Greek thing, side hammers. Folks, I'm using the Velcro to tie it this time, not just the tree tie. Now this is a half, I think it's recycled material this time. They've changed their, the way they make their stuff, so it's great to see that they're actually going that way. And, you know, this is a nice wide piece, rather than the little narrow ones, which you, you can use on your roses and small plants. This is perfect for, perfect for trees. And I'm just going to wrap it around like this, nice and tight, and that should hold it in place. Beautiful. There we are. So that's not going to move. It'll wobble a little bit, but that's nothing to worry about. And now the last thing we've got to do, we're going to feed it with our liquid gold and EK Butch. A bit of that stuff. The same stuff that you made up in the bucket earlier to soak your tree in is what I'm doing. I'm not going to put it in here because it's got a lot of particles in there. So we're just going to pour it in straight like that over the tree carefully. Make a good mix. Oh, I love how it just soaks down like that. Look at that. How good is that? A good 10 litres every time you water it is all it needs, folks. And there you have it. This time of year, you can transplant your trees, your fruit trees, citrus trees, and even roses if you like. Anything dormant. And if you're looking for some great products, go to our website, vasilisgarden.com. The biochar will be available as a worm castings, black grid and all the wonderful liquid fertilizers we have. Nice package too. Check it all out, vasilisgarden.com. From me, Vasily, Maresi.